With geometry nodes, you can make things that weren't possible before. For instance, you can make a building generator or a cake generator that converts your text into a cake or maybe a pathway generator that creates path along the curve and also scatter objects. There are endless possibilities of what you can do with geometry nodes. So basically, geometry nodes is a node-based system by which you can manipulate geometry. So in this video, we'll be creating this grassy field scene with geometry nodes. And on this channel, I've made some tutorials about geometry nodes, but those are now outdated because Blender 3.0 now uses the field system, which is actually much easier to understand now. So whether you learned the previous geometry nodes or you are a complete beginner, this video is for you. So download and install Blender 3.0 and let's get started. So now let's start by not deleting the default cube but everything else. Then I'm gonna create a new workspace for the geometry nodes editor. So let's create a new workspace and geometry nodes workspace. And now here's the geometry nodes editor and this is the spreadsheet editor. But I don't use the spreadsheet editor. So this is for advanced users. So I'm gonna collapse. So I'm gonna collapse this, oops, so I'm gonna collapse this, man, why this isn't working? So I'm gonna collapse this window, now I'm gonna select the default cube and I'm gonna create a new geometry nodes tree. And you can see that it has also added a modifier which is the geometry nodes modifier. And actually geometry nodes is a modifier so you can see that there are two nodes by default one is group input and the other is group output so the group input node consists the information or the data about the object and the group output node outputs the data so in between of these two nodes we can do all sort of things and we can manipulate the geometry so let's do some basic things like how can we move rotate and scale this cube with geometry nodes so what we're gonna need is a transform node so i'm gonna add that in and now we can translate this cube and also we can rotate and scale this cube as we wish so if you want you can also animate this so if I make some changes on this cube let's say I'm gonna scale this down like that and I'm gonna rotate this and I'm gonna add another object um, let's add a monkey and and I'm gonna move that here and let's use the same modifier that this cube is using so I'm gonna shift select that then I'm gonna press ctrl L and I'm gonna copy the modifiers because geometry nodes is a modifier and now you can see that this Suzanne is also is also transforming because both of those are using the same geometry nodes 3 so if we make some changes here, it will also affect this zen. So now I'm gonna delete this transform node by hitting Ctrl X so that the nodes are still connected. And also I'm gonna delete this monkey head. And we can also subdivide this cube by using geometry nodes. So for that, we are gonna need a subdivision surface node and we can now subdivide this cube by using the geometry nodes and now let's delete this subdivision surface node by hitting ctrl x and now let's start creating the ground so now let's delete the default cube and add in a plane for the ground and i'm gonna scale this up to maybe five times and 
make sure to apply the scale whenever you scale objects in object mode so i'm gonna press ctrl a and apply the scale and you can see that this scale is now reset to one so now let's create a new geometry nodes tree and i'm gonna call that ground so you know that we can add a transform node and translate this plane but how do we move the vertices of this plane to displace it so for that we have a node called set position so i'm gonna search for that so now we can add an input position node and connect that to the position and it doesn't do anything and that's because the position node contains the position of the object and we are using that to change the position of this plane so nothing would happen but now when we have this input we can tweak it so what we can do now is we can add a vector math node and if you don't know what's a vector math node it's just a math node which performs calculations but the vector math node does calculations on all the three axes so because position is a vector i'm going to use the vector math node so let's plug this in and now we can use this value to move our plane but how do we make it bumpy like a field so for that we need a texture so in blender 3.0 we have a lot of textures like in the shader editor so the texture we are going to use is the noise texture so now i'm going to use the factor as the input for this vector and if i change the scale you can see that something's happening but not much is happening and that's because if you go to edit mode we can see that we only have four vertices to work with and also you'd notice that in edit mode it's showing the actual geometry even when we have displaced it so how do we subdivide this mesh so i'm gonna add a subdivide mesh node not a subdivision surface node because it also rounds off the plane but we don't want to make it rounded so I'm gonna press Ctrl X to delete it then I'm gonna add a subdivide mesh node and I'm gonna plug that here and let's subdivide this to maybe six times and now you can see our plane is displaced but it's actually displacing on all the three axes as you can see here but we only want to displace it on the Z axis and that is happening because this single factor value is being used for this vector value so what we can do to displace it only on the z axis is we can add in a combined x y z node and now i'm gonna plug that here and now we can use this factor to only displace the z axis and now you can see this displacing only on the z axis but this isn't looking good because the scale is high so I'm gonna decrease that to something like this and now this is looking good and also you can play with these settings if you want to and also you can switch this from 3d to 4d and now you have a seed value which you can change to get a different noise texture So for having more control over this displacement, you can also add in a color ramp after the after the noise texture and you can play with these handles if you want to. But I'm gonna delete that. So how do we control the strength of the displacement? So for that, uh, we can add in a math node and plug that here and change this from add to multiply then if you type 0 here then our plane won't be displaced at all because multiplying something by a value of 0 results 0 
so nothing would be displaced and if you type 1 here then it would be the same if this isn't here because multiplying by 1 gives itself but now we can use this value to change the strength of the displacement so you can make it less displaced or more displaced and one thing you would have noticed is that when we displaced this plane it also moved up so you can use so you can use this offset value to offset this plane so we can offset this on the z-axis by negative 0.5 and now our plane is at the grid floor but if you change this strength then you'd have to go again and change the offset so wouldn't it be cool if we just change this strength and it stays at the same place and yes it is possible so i'm going to show you how to do that so first i'm going to change this to one and i'm going to offset it by negative 0.5 on the z-axis so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a value node and i'm going to type one here then i'm going to use this as the input for this multiply node and now we can use this same value to offset the z position of this plane but this is a vector so i'm gonna add a combine x y z node then i'm gonna plug that into the offset and now let's use this as the input for the z position and now when we increase the strength it also moves up but we want to stay that at the same place so what we can do is we can add a math node here then I'm gonna set that to multiply then I'm gonna multiply it by negative 0.5 so now when we multiply 1 by negative 0.5 the result will be negative 0.5 so now when we change the strength of this plane it stays at the same place how cool is that and I'm gonna shade this smooth and I'm going to press H to collapse this node to organize this a little bit. And also let's increase the strength a little to something like this. Or instead of collapsing this node by pressing H, you can also press Ctrl H to hide the unused sockets and now this is looking organized and clean so these are all the nodes that we are using to displace this plane so we can select these nodes and press ctrl G to group these and we can press tab to go out of this and you can see that it has grouped these nodes into one single node. So I'm going to press tab again. And I'm going to disconnect this value node. And I'm going to plug that into the group input node. Then I'm going to plug this in also. And now you can see that we can control that value from the node group. And you can also add a readout node by holding shift and right clicking and dragging over, over these lines. And that only works if you have enabled the node wrangler add-on from the preferences. And we can also rename these values. So I'm going to press N, then I'm going to go to group and the first, uh, the first input is the displacement so I'm gonna rename that to displacement then I'm gonna rename the second one to a strength and we can also rename this node group so I'm gonna rename that to Z displacement because it displaces the geometry on the z-axis 
So now we can just duplicate this node group and use that again to add another layer of displacement. So you can just duplicate this and maybe make this one smaller and also turn down the strength a little to add more detail. And also after this you can also add a subdivision surface node to give this displacement more detail. But I don't want to make this that much detailed, so I'm gonna just delete these nodes by pressing Ctrl X. So that's it for this video guys and in the next part I'll be showing you how to scatter the grass and also the rocks on this plane. So if you find this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for the next part. And I'll be back.